Okay, okay, okay. I know I've been kind of tiptoeing around not talking about Dunlop rackets for a while now, but we finally decided to bring them back into the store for 2024, and we're starting off with a bang. Today, we're reviewing the brand new CX200. Hey everybody, it's Luca from Rackets and Runners. So I have to admit, I am super, super happy that we decided to bring Dunlop back to the store. I've always had a bit of a soft spot for them, especially nowadays with so many modern rackets, they're still making some great classic stuff. The CX line has been one of my go-tos for a number of years now, and while the previous one definitely wasn't my favorite, they've made a number of very important updates that have changed the whole hitting experience with this racket. Now Dunlop is one thing, but if you want me to start talking about more niche brands, we gotta grow, because the store has to become massive enough to sell something that's not necessarily established. We're all for exploration, but business is business, ladies and gentlemen. So please, do subscribe to the channel, that's how we're going to grow, and also please remember to like the video, follow me and the store on Instagram, and remember that any of the rackets we talk about here you can check out on our website racketsandrunners.ca. Enough about that though, let's talk about some specs and the new tech on the CX200. Now most of the specs have technically stayed the same, it still has a 98 square inch head size, a 16 by 19 string pattern that is a little different, we'll talk more about that I promise, and it still flexes at 63 RA strung. The 21.5 millimeter constant box beam has also technically stayed the same, it hasn't gotten any thicker this way, but it has gotten wider this way. So yes, this part of the beam has stayed the same, this part of the beam has gotten wider, and as you would expect, a design change like that has had a major impact on playability. The changes don't stop there though, Dunlop really went all out with this new version. The next thing to talk about is the string pattern density. The previous CX200 had one of those dynamic string beds that gets a little more dense in the middle of the sweet spot, and honestly, when you look at just how dense it is on this one, I always thought it was a little over the top. I'm not necessarily against the brand doing this, but I do think it was too much on this one. They've toned it back big time on the new CX200. It is still a little more dense in the middle, but much more naturally so. Oh, and by the way, for all those of you who are curious, this is called Power Grid String Tech Plus. Now the last change we all knew was coming. Everyone is doing it and Dunlop is no exception. They've added a new stabilization technology to the frame called Vibro Shield. First of all, Vibro Shield is hilarious. I think I might make a tier list of all the stabilization technology names in the industry, and that's gonna have to take the cake. But anyways, Dunlop claims that it's a super elastic material that reduces vibrations and also makes the racket feel more solid. That sounds a lot like Auxetic and really everything else. And of course, there's still those Sonic Core inserts like there were on the previous CX. But yeah, tons of changes, and I have to say, I'm really happy when brands make major changes like this because it makes for such an interesting review experience. And honestly, there is a lot to say with this racket. I do wanna make one thing clear before we move on though, I'm going to be very detailed and in some ways critical of this racket today, but that's only because I think this is one of the most impressive control rackets I've ever tested, so that's why I have so much to say and why I'm very passionate about explaining exactly what it has to offer. Let's get into it. It almost feels impossible to talk about a control racket in 2024 without first addressing the relationship between feel and stability. Feel has always been so important to talk about with control rackets because good feel is what gives players that unique connection to the ball that control rackets are known for. The problem is nowadays, you can't just mold a thin beam piece of graphite and call it a control racket anymore. Even your control racket needs some tech and technology is always going to change the way a racket feels and not always for the best. Reconciling that need for tech while still maintaining good feel is not that easy. Previous Wilson Blades, for example, really suffered in that regard. So the question is, how do feel and stability coexist on the CX200? Well, it's certainly not the most traditional feeling frame, but it's far from the muted, mushy messes that we saw sprinkled throughout the industry for a time. Comparing it directly to other control rackets, I would say it falls somewhere in between a Blade and a Percept in terms of how pure of a feel you get. The Blade is definitely a little more muted and the Percept does have a slightly more crisp connection to the ball. Also, as usual, when I review a control racket, I grab my Pro Tour 280 to compare it to what I consider the most pure hitting experience, and it definitely isn't the same, but where it blows this racket out of the water is in its easy stability. Let's rewind a little bit to that ridiculously low 307 strung swing weight. Now honestly, I didn't want to try it like that, but I did, and yes, it's way too low. I decided to add lead, but I also didn't want to go too over the top with customization, because I'm pretty sure that Dunlop wants this racket to swing low, so I only brought it up to 315 strung. The result was quite frankly a astonishing, and I'm not gonna lie, even when I did test it with that low 300 swing weight, 
I could tell this racket was on another level in terms of easy stability. The layup tech itself is definitely important for that for sure, but what I think is way more important is this new beam design. Widening the beam like this was always going to make the racket more resilient to off-center shots, but I wasn't expecting it to perform this well in terms of that easy stability. At that 315 swing weight, the stability feels more along the lines of what you get with the 330 swing weight. I think this might be the most effective stabilization technology I've ever tried. Seriously, at the beginning of my playtest, I was thinking to myself, this feels like a control racket version of the Clash, and while that might not sound like a good thing, it actually is because it doesn't have that same artificially stable feel that the Clash has. Like it definitely has a bit of that feel, but not nearly as much as the Clash, and honestly even less than something like the Blade I find. You see, the Clash accomplishes its great stability mainly through its unique graphite layup but that uniqueness is also what makes the feel a little weird to us tennis purists. On the CX200, there's definitely a bit of that artificially stable feel, I'm not denying that, but because it's an actual physical design element and not some magical layup ingredient, they've managed to make it so impressively stable without totally ruining the feel. I'm super impressed, and honestly, I don't even feel the need to add a leather grip to this racket, which you all know I love to do. I did try it for a bit, and I do think you can if you want to, but it almost felt like overkill, and it hurt the maneuverability a little bit, which I really didn't want to mess around with too much. Now right off the bat, I'm going to be a little critical of the CX200's maneuverability, but I want to make it clear, compared to a traditional control racket with a high static weight and 330 plus swing weight, it is much more maneuverable. That's a big reason for why these brands are adding these stabilization technologies to control rackets. They're trying to bring their speed and user friendliness closer to that of lighter tweeners, but also obviously trying to keep that solid feel you need from a control racket. So yes, this racket is quicker than traditional control rackets, but compared to the previous one and compared to other modern control rackets, I actually find it a bit slow, and that comes down to this wider beam profile. Throughout several hits with this racket, I always found that it played a bit bigger than its specs would suggest, and switching to the blade and the Percept definitely confirmed that for me. Even this Percept, which has a nearly identical swing weight, but a higher static weight and a leather grip, it felt quicker, more maneuverable, not necessarily lighter, but the CX200 just felt a little bit more clunky in general. That is one of the small drawbacks of a traditional box beam like this. Because it's so square and so flat, it doesn't slice through the air as efficiently as the blades or even the hybrid box beam on the Percept. That is why I didn't want to add too much swing weight and why I eventually took off the leather grip, but I do want to make it clear, we're talking about really subtle differences here. It is still a quick racket, but it is a little bit under its direct competition when we keep the weight specs as close as possible. Now of course, maneuverability is important for spin because it's directly related to whippiness, so that has a small negative effect on spin, but other than that, this racket is very spin friendly. Because they've opened up the string bed on this racket, the strings have a bit more space to move and generating spin comes a lot easier and it feels a bit more natural. It also makes for a higher launch angle so you get a bit more purchase and bite on the ball. It's nothing too extreme of course but it does produce a bit more spin than something like the Percept and it's very similar to the blade. I was actually extremely comfortable hitting with more spin than I'm used to with this racket and considering the amount of power it can generate which we'll talk about in a second I was very happy that it had this much spin because that also helped me with control. Now this is the section where I'm going to try to explain everything the CX200 is really about. Because yes, it's a control racket, but it's definitely not all about control. The first thing that stuck out to me was just how powerful this racket is. When you combine the stabilization tech, the wider box beam, the more open string pattern, and the fact that all these characteristics make it more playable at a low static and swing weight, all of that adds up to a racket that's actually pretty powerful. Now we're definitely not talking pure drive here, but when you compare it to something low powered like the Percept, you get noticeably more pace and depth on your shot. When I grabbed the Percept after playing with the CX for a while, I put my first three forehands into the net because I'd kind of adapted my technique to the higher launch and more powerful response on this racket. Even my dad who was watching was like, yeah, as soon as you grabbed that racket, you missed every shot, which was kind of weird. Really good impression of my dad. But that's just it. This racket packs a bit more of a punch than a really traditional control racket, which means it has the potential to swing big and serve big, but it is a bit of a double-edged sword. Of course, when a racket generates a bit more depth and when the launch angle is higher, it tends to be a little more difficult to control, seeing as this is a control racket, that could be a negative for some people. At the beginning of my playtest, that's certainly how I felt and I was definitely launching a few balls deeper than I wanted, but there is a big difference between this racket's power profile and say something like a Clash or a Pure Drive. The CX200 is scaled up a bit in power, but it's consistent in the amount of power that it generates 
and that's because it has those control racket elements of a thin constant beam and a fairly soft flex. So once you've actually adapted to the amount of power it can produce, it's never going to surprise you with weird or random launches. That's when it becomes like any other control racket, consistent, consistent, consistent. Hopefully that makes sense. It is a little bit tough to explain. If it's not totally clear, ask me for clarification and I'll do my best to answer in the comments. And just really quickly, because there are so many changes coming from the previous one and those changes might make it seem like it is less controlled, I don't really think so. I always find that if a string bed changes too much in density in the sweet spot, it also feels a little bit inconsistent. Obviously the previous one had that. I know a lot of people like that, but you won't get that same slightly inconsistent feel here. So how does all this playability explain who this racket is for? Well, this is a very, very good modern control racket because it's so complementary to a modern style. I've started to realize that when I like a racket more on my forehand than I do my backhand, that's because the racket tends to do better when you hit with spin. My backhand is super flat, so I really like low launching, really flexy, really low powered frames because that's how I get the most amount of control on that shot. Within the CX line, the 200 Tour 1820 has a bit more of that, and I'll review this racket soon, but the CX200 has much more potential to hit your opponent off the court and vary it up with high percentage spin shots if you need to. It's certainly worth comparing this racket more directly to the Blade, the Percept, and even some other less traditional control rackets, because yeah, this racket can kind of do it all. And also, because it's so user-friendly, it doesn't really require you to be a high-level player to handle it. I think this is an absolutely fantastic racket, and it shows me that technology, when used properly, doesn't mean you really have to sacrifice much in one area for major improvements in others. Dunlop really knocked it out of the park, and it goes without saying that I think this is a major improvement on the previous one, which was already a pretty good racket, by the way, but I'm really curious to see how this does in terms of sales. That's gonna be the ultimate test for you, Dunlop. Can you sell the CX line? Honestly, I think you can. With that said, that is going to be the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching. And remember that if you do want to demo the CX200 or really any other racket, you can come visit us in store or you can check it out online at racketsandrunners.ca.